Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to explain what gene's length is. Well, gene's length has to do with the size of a molecular cloud or an interstellar medium that is dense enough for it to collapse. Now, there's always this fight between is there enough gravity to collapse that interstellar medium into a star or into a group of stars, or is the internal pressure of that gas at too high of a temperature, too much for gravity to overcome. So it also depends upon the density of the interstellar medium and also upon the forces, the electromagnetic forces that exist within that moving gas mass. So the definition could be written as follows. It is the minimum diameter of an interstellar cloud or a segment of the interstellar cloud that has sufficient density in order to collapse under the force of gravity to overcome the thermal pressure, the radiation pressure, and the electromagnetic forces. So here we have a pictorially of that. Let's say we have this huge interstellar matter right there, and we have a, a portion of that which is sufficiently dense and large enough, the diameter of it is sufficiently large, and that's called the gene's length, and the minimum diameter required of that segment of that cloud, so that gravity will cause it to collapse against all these other forces. So how do we calculate gene's length? Well, we need some concepts. We need the concept of density, which is mass divided by volume, and the velocity of molecules in a gas, which is equal to the square root of the bulk modulus divided by the density and the bulk modulus can be defined as this gamma times p, p the pressure in the gas, and the gamma is the ratio of this, the molar specific heat under constant pressure divided by the molar specific heat under constant volume. And since we know from the, from the um, ideal gas equation that PV equals nRT, we could then say, well, let's see here, we can replace the bulk modulus by the ratio of the specific heats times the pressure divided by the density and then notice we can use P is equal to nRT divided by the volume and of course if we let n equals 1 for one mole that's per mole we can then say that it's gamma RT over density times the volume. Now going back to this notice that the mass, or I should say density times volume equals the mass, so the denominator can be replaced by the mass. And for a monatomic gas, C sub P, that would be equal to uh, 5 over 2 times the gas constant. C sub V is 3 over 2 times the gas, con gas constant. So you can see that for a monatomic gas, that ratio will be equal to 5 over 3. So now we have the velocity of the molecules in a gas under that specific temperature, considering it's a monatomic gas, because of course three quarters of the gas there would be hydrogen, which is monatomic. We then come over here again to the concept of density, which is mass over volume, and we can write the volume as being four thirds pi r cubed, where r then of course would be the radius of this segment right here. And of course, since pi is approximately equal to 3, we can simplify this equation by just taking these, this ratio to be 1, and so it's approximately equal to the mass divided by 4r cubed. Now, of course, you have to remember the equation for the escape velocity of a gas, because essentially, you can think of this, if the molecules are moving fast enough, they can actually escape this gravitational well, cannot be bound gravitationally to that region, and it will never collapse. So if the escape velocity is too high, if the molecules are moving too fast, things are not going to collapse. And we remember that the escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2 gm over r, so when you square both sides, you get the escape velocity squared is equal to 2 times the universal gravitational constant times the mass within that cloud divided by the radius. Now, let's see here, what should we do next? Well, let's go to m, and m can be defined as the density times 4r cubed, so we're going to replace m by 4r cubed times the density. And of course, this r cancels out one of those r's, and now we end up with 2 times 4 is 8, g r squared times the density being equal to the escape velocity of the gas inside. So now if we solve that equation for r, the radius, notice that we then have r squared must now be larger than the escape velocity squared divided by 8 times the gravitational constant times the density. Why do we say larger than? Because that's now the minimum size required, so this size or bigger 
presumably will cause that segment of the clot to collapse. Taking the square root of both sides, r must be greater than the escape velocity divided by the square root of 8g times the density. So, what is gene's length then? Well, gene's length would be twice the radius, and the square root of 8 is roughly about 2. Again, we're looking for rough comparisons. So, that means we can go ahead and say we now have uh, the gene's length is therefore equal to the escape velocity divided by the square root of g times density. So we multiply both sides by 2 to get the gene's length, and 2 divided by the square root of 8 is roughly 1. And so therefore we can say it's approximately equal to the escape velocity divided by the square root of g, the Kraft initial constant, times the density of the cloud. Now, of course, we have to remember that the escape velocity is going to depend on the temperature of the cloud. So at higher temperatures, you need larger mass, a larger gene's length for smaller temperatures, for very cold temperatures, you don't need nearly as large of a mass in order for it to collapse. You have to remember that this is the relationship within a cloud, because it's, you know, this seems pretty simplistic. It's obviously not so simplistic at all. There's a lot of things going on uh, in the cloud. There's angular momentum, there's motion of the whole cloud, there's a lot of things there that could prevent things from collapsing. So this is an approximate uh, value for the gene's length, and it can depend on a lot of things. But we have to remember that the pressure inside the gas is dependent on the temperature, which then causes certain velocity, which causes a certain amount of momentum of the molecules in there. And so, we then have to remember that for a monatomic gas, the escape velocity is going to be approximately equal to 5 thirds RT over M, R being the, the gas constant, T being the temperature in Kelvin, and M being the molar mass. Remember, this was a per mole thing. And so when we plug that in here, we now have an equation that we can work with to calculate the minimum size required of a cl cloud of dust and gas for it to collapse into into something that could begin a star or could begin a cluster of stars depending upon how much gas there is. And we'll do some examples of that when we plug in a particular temperature we can see how large that region must be before we can reasonably assume that it could possibly collapse. And that again is the concept of gene's length.